back with another video here for you. Uh, this video is basically on how to solder up posts on e on ESCs. The ESCs like this uh, Tegan RX-8 that I have here. You know, the posts on it uh, have, you know, they have slotted posts on the sides. Uh, unlike some of the other ESCs that are out there, any of these posts, in order to solder these up, the first thing you're going to have to do, uh, on the RX-8 at least, is you're going to have to unplug your fan, unscrew it, which I've already done here, and then slide this fan out of the housing. That way, you can get in behind these posts with soldering iron and without melting your fan. So, I started this already, actually, as you can see, I already have my post uh, tin, but uh, then I decided, you know, hey, I could probably do a little video on this and show people how I do it, and so I decided to backtrack a little bit and do that. So, at any rate, uh, you want to, you do want to pre-tin these posts um, basically just like you do anything else you gotta you want to pre-tin it and the way you do that is, is you take your iron and you know you tin your iron get in behind the post with your iron and you basically use your iron as to, to heat the entire back of the post uh, and basically all you do is uh, fill up the inside of the post with um, solder just like you would say a bullet connector and once you got the solder filled up inside of those posts there then you can solder in the rest of your wires now I'm only going to solder in the battery connector on this on this RX-8 for the moment because I'm going to um, I'm going to direct connect my motor and my ESC and I'm going to have to mount the ESC in the vehicle before I can do that. But I can go ahead and show you guys what I like or how I like to do this um, with the power cord here. So I already, I already described to you on how to pre-tin the posts. Once you get them pre-tinned, then basically what I like to do is, you know, you got to pre-tin your wires. But what I like to do after I get them pre-tinned is go back and get yourself a pair of needle nose pliers and go back and melt all that solder that's on the end of that wire. Once you get it melted, you can put the solder up, take your pliers, and you can kind of mash the end flat. It didn't get quite as flat as I wanted it, so I'll try it again here. You gotta be pretty quick. There. So now, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but now we've got a kind of a flat edge on it. And we, what we can do with that edge is we can slide it right down in that post. So let me go ahead and just do that for the other side of this wire here. OK, 
Okay. And now we'll solder them into the post here. I'll try to do this on side so you guys can see a little bit better what I'm doing. some more heat shrink out here. Oh, I might not have a heat shrink for this. All right, so let's get the iron. Go in here behind the post with the iron and the solder melts. Well, that wasn't exactly what I had in mind. Solder drained out the side when I when I got my iron down there. Yeah, that wasn't a very good example because it was since it was on its side, the uh, solder drained out of it. At any rate, that gives you the basic idea. You, you're basically just mashing the wire flat so it fits in between those slotted areas better. And now I'm off to mount it in my LST2 electric conversion. And uh, I have some picks and probably a bit of that as well once I get it done. And uh, if you know anybody that uh, you know could use this information, or you want to share it, you liked it, whatever, feel free to post it up uh, wherever you want. Share it with folks. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And you can also check out my uh, Facebook page, Great Wolf Studio 74. And if you have any questions about anything, you can give me a an email, you can shoot me an email at uh, graywolfstudio74 at gmail.com. Peace.